Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java tutorial series. This episode we're going to be going over how to work with um, monitors like the synchronized keyword in Java. And uh, so it might be a little confusing if you don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, if you go back maybe like two or three episodes ago, I talked about what a monitor is. And um, basically what it is is it's when you have a thread and when a thread enters a monitor, it stops any other thread from running until that thread uh, leaves the monitor, basically. So it makes the it's like forcing the program become to become synchronized, meaning that only um, they can run only one at a time, basically. But um, if it's asynchronous, asynchronous, see, I have blah, 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 I can't say that word, asynchronized. Um, that means that everything runs at once, not everything, but you know, a few things can run at once, whatever. So um, yeah, so first I'm going to start by making a, an example program here and then um, I'll show you what the problem is and then we'll give you a solution and uh, we'll explain why we need that solution and you'll, it'll become evident once we get it started and it might be a little confusing once we write this program because it has a lot of little components but it's really simple if you just take your time, pause the video, look at it, play around with it and all that cool stuff. So um, let's get started. So we're going to make a class here. <clears throat> And we're just going to call this class message. And what this class will be is just a simple class that holds one method, and that's it, okay? It'll be called void send. And what this will do is have, um, well, it's going to take a string here, so string message. And all it's going to do is output a message. Um, so like this, uh, sending message. Oops. And then it's just going to output, you know, the parameter that it asked for. And then it's going to wait one second, okay. And then it'll do thread.sleep1000. Uh, and it's going to catch that error, of course, in case it ever happens for some reason. And that will happen if for some reason the thread is interrupted or something like that. So don't really worry about it, um, okay, because I never come across the problem anyway. So anyway, um, after that, one second is up, it's going to print out a confirmation so confirm message confirm message oh my gosh sent that's just gonna put message again just to like confirm it I'm actually gonna add something here I'm gonna add like a border and you'll see why the border is needed um kind of maybe maybe you'll catch it um and then you know right there like that so it's like a board you know so um, that's good. That's our simple class there with our uh, single method. And then we're going to have a thread class or a thread. Um, so it's called message threader. So this will be a thread that basically sends a message, right? It just it's going to be able to call on this one. And it's going to implement runnable, of course, because that's how we make our methods here in Illuminati Productions, or threads, I mean. And then we're going to do public void run, of course, because we've got to call our you know, got to implement our unimplemented methods, which is something you always have to do whenever you implement an interface, for example, runnable. So anyway, so inside of that, we're going to do, well, we can't do it yet, but we're going to be able to run this uh, method here, of course. So what we have, we're going to have three variables here. So string message, okay, and this will be a placeholder eventually that will go into here whenever we call upon this in the, in the run here, and you'll see what happens. And then we're going to have another one, thread t. This is something we've already done. So that would be just like a placeholder, I guess. And then we'll have message t. And look closely. This, oh, not t. Uh, let's do target. Um, it doesn't matter what the name is. It literally has no effect. But this is important here, message. Where the hell did that come from? Actually, it's from here. It's our class. And um, yeah. So what we're doing here is creating, like we did here, a variable object reference or whatever. I don't even know what you call it, but something like that. It sounds like that. It's a reference of some type. And uh, yeah, so what we can do with this is once we link it to something, we're going to be able to access message and then therefore access any methods that are inside of the message object once we create it, which will be really cool. And you'll see why. So we're going to have a constructor here because with um, threads, you usually need a constructor, I guess. You don't have to, but usually yeah, you do. Um, so we're going to do message threader, we'll have a parameter here, well two parameters, so first one will be message target, you know, it's the same thing here, and it's only a coincidence that they have the same name, and the coincidence is that I'm lazy and I don't, I'm not very creative, so I'm just going to give them the same name, since they're not even related because they don't box each other, it's hard to explain, but you should know what I mean. 
and then we're gonna have string message okay so what that will do is it'll take you know a object uh, and then we'll but, well, you know, when we use this here, our main thread here, we're going to be creating an object of the type message. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So message, message equals new message. Okay. So what we'll do then is then put this thing here, message, into here in this parameter. And then we'll have a, you know, obviously the message that we want to send. And then we'll put that one inside of here. And it's all very confusing and extensive, but just slow down, maybe pause the video and check it out if you need to. If not, then let's continue. So once we have that, we can do this dot message and equals message. And this is just a pretty simple thing. We're just setting the uh, variables that we made here equal to the parameters that we entered here. And then this dot target equal to target. Oops, there you go. So once we have that, finally we're going to create our thread so t equals new thread and then inside of that thread we'll just have this we don't need to give it a name um because that i mean we could if we want to but i'm not going to give a name so we only have to have this at least so this that's what we have here and yeah that's all we need to have pretty much and then uh, basically what we have now since we have this target reference here since we have access to target which is you know this we can access, like I said, the methods inside of the target or whatever class we obtained. So we can do target dot send. There we go. And then here, instead of putting a message manually, we put boom, that parameter right there that we had. So boom, it all hooks up together. It's really cool. This is a cool little chat thingy. Uh, not very advanced, but it's a little confusing for y'all if you're new to this. So anyway, so now we're done with all of that. So now let's try running it. So what we got to do, of course, is create a new thread. So let's do that. So message threader message one equals new message threader. And it's going to ask for a parameter. And we're going to input here into here, of course. So message. And the next one will just be our message. So uh, climate change is real. That'll be our first message. And then we'll just go ahead and run that and see what happens. Oh wait, yeah, nothing happened because we didn't call the start method, of course, in the thread. Um, so t dot start. There we go. Good little catch there. Good. So now it's running. Sending message. Climate change is real. Confirm message sent. Or climate change is real. And then yeah, really cool. So the border is just you know, so that's like structured, you know, so it looks kind of cool. So um, yeah. So once we have that, um, we're gonna head and go ahead and make another thread to run alongside it, so it'll run concurrently, meaning at the same time. So message two equals new message letter message. And we can put in the same object um, if we want to, and that's what we're doing. Um, it doesn't matter. We can do multiple objects, but there's really no point. I mean, the only reason we have this thing is just so we can access this and steal its method, basically. That's how I'd put it. And then we can say, like, yeah, bro. It is just something really stupid. Okay. So let's try running that now by calling it start method within the thread. Great. So let's see. It's going to run concurrently now and see what happens. So we get sending message. Oh, oh, oh. So right off the bat, we see that it does run concurrently. And but there's a problem because um, it's sending um, the messages first, but then it's confirming them both at the same time. So it's like really unordered and the borders are off and just like it's not happening in order like you would want it to. Like you can't send all of them at the same time and then confirm them all at the same time. It just like, it doesn't make sense. That's like texting someone and then you can only send the message once you sent all of the messages you want to send basically. Like it does not make sense. And then you can only, can, and then the receiver of the text messages that you send can only receive all the messages once you sent all of them. Like it, it just doesn't even make sense, okay? So what we want to do here is add one thing synchronize oops got rid of the void by accident the return type so that's all we had to do and let's watch what happens boom so now it sends confirms sends confirms so now it's in order it makes sense now so let's explain what synchronize did so what synchronize did is it was a keyword within java and you use it on methods and what this does is it makes it so that it turns into a monitor basically so Whenever you um, add synchronize to a method and you call that method, 
then you can't run any other method, any other synchronized method until that method is done running. So basically it stops everything and uh, it becomes a synchronized um, thread, basically, program. So, you know, nothing else can run until that one is done. So that's basically what that does. So it makes things run at one at a time. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense for you. Um, so yeah, so, yep. So basically what it did is stop this one from uh, sending until this one was done running and it confirmed, basically. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, next episode, we're gonna be working with the synchronized keyword one more time, because there's another way we can use it. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll be glad to help you. Or we have a Discord in the description if you wanna join it and talk to us and hang out, ask for questions, anything like that. So we can do that. Leave a like if you wanna see more. Or no, leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And peace.